hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to listen to me today. My name is Sanne Vrijenhoek and I am a project researcher in a one-year project in a collaboration between the University of Amsterdam's Faculty of Law, Information Law specifically, and RTL News Data Science Division. So, let's talk about news. News is important. News is crucial in the way that we view the world and therefore also influences the important decisions that we make. For example, who we're going to vote for during election time. But there is just so much news. The New York Times by itself publishes 1,100 articles a day. And not even the most dedicated reader can keep up with all this news, let alone that they could compare the articles from the New York Times with articles from a different media source with maybe a different political allegiance. So because of this, we have come to rely on recommenders. A recommender, uh, th these come in very different shapes and sizes, and they help us determine which stories are relevant for us to read. So for example, on the uh, front page of a news website, for example, the Dutch new.nl, there could be a list of articles that the editors think are important for everybody to know and read. Once you have selected an article, a different recommender could pop up and give you a list uh, of other articles that might be interesting, given that you have already read this particular article. And lastly, getting much more traction recently, are the personalized recommenders. The recommenders that think, okay, for this particular user, we think they might be interested in this particular subject. Um, but recently, a lot of concerns have come up about filter bubbles. So in the most famous example of this, uh, the most famous TED talk about this subject, the speaker noted that on his Facebook page, he would only see uh, post, uh, democratic posts from his democratic friends, where the Republican friends had fallen off the radar. Apparently, since Facebook filtered his newsfeed in such a way that he would only get to see um, either the things that he, similar to things that he had seen before, or that his democratic, more close his democratic friends had liked, he, would comp he only saw things in articles that reflected already his personal opinion and therefore filtered him from, um, di didn't expose him enough to other opinions. And this is inherent how the current approaches on recommender systems work. Um, the most common one is recommend something that the uh, user has already seen before, or the other one, collaborative filtering, if, uh, so for me, that would be, uh, I would get to see articles that other 20-something white females living in Amsterdam uh, had seen. And this works perfectly fine for product recommendations in, in web shops, but in news, because it's so important, kind of needs to be held to a slightly different standard than run-of-the-mill uh, products you can buy. So this was the, uh, the start of the project that we uh, started last September at the University of Amsterdam. To we needed to, wanted to develop a tool that uh, media companies could use to evaluate the recommendations that they uh, generate. Um, and other than that, good luck. So what we decided to do was to uh, scrape all news articles uh, from the three different, uh, very different media sources from the 2017 Index and Elasticsearch. We would generate some baseline recommendations where the idea is that they could serve as comparison for the uh, media company. They could compare their own recommendations with these baseline and then calculate the diversity and visualize this in an easy to understand manner. But then you kind of get to the crux of the matter because what is diversity? For diversity is an incredibly complex concept that kind of really depends on who you ask. I bet a lot of the people here today expected me to come to have a whole talk about uh, gender bias or minority representation, for example. There, then again, if you ask an average computer scientist, diversity entails uh, to entropy and long tail representation and, and popularity. But these metrics don't really make sense in the context of news. So what do you do? I would like to introduce you to the concept of a normative framework, which is something that I had never heard of before I actually walked into the university in, uh, in September, but it's kind of what these information law people do. They develop a model of what the world should look like, how should it be, the different choices that you have, and then with their, um, the, their, all with their advantages and disadvantages, and to yeah, just establish what we think uh, the world should be. And my job here is to look at this normative framework that they constructed for a democratically, uh, how do you say that, proper recommender, and turn that into something that can be quantifiable for computers. 
So this is what they came up with. And which, normative, which framework you choose is very much dependent on the media company and, that, and the role that they assume towards their users. So for example, if um, they assume that in the end the user just knows what is best for them, it is perfectly fine to make your recommenders based on user clicks or interaction time. Um, it, 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 it basically means anything goes and if, if it makes the user interact with our news platform longer, that's great. That's all that we want. Um, it's perfectly fine then if the user also only sees pop uh, popular articles. Then again, if you were to follow the participatory framework, you assume more of a paternalistic role. You educate your users towards everything that is out there in society. It becomes very important that your recommender also reflects all the, um, all the opinions that are out there in the world. The common good trumps self-interest in this sense, and it has a the decided larger focus on political articles than, for, for example, the liberal framework would have. Then you have the deliberative and the constructionist framework, which are slightly more similar to the participatory uh, framework, whereas the deliberative model would be more focused on me as a particular user and challenging me in particular. So if I am uh, a left wing, usually, it would assume, okay, she knows all about the, the left wing opinions out there in society, let's give her more right wing stuff to look at. Um, and the constructionist, uh, all the way, and it also, it, uh, it's still very factual, biased, in the end, it's, it's focused on agreeing to disagree, know what is out there, become open minded, but we don't all have to think the same thing. The constructionist on the other model is, focuses on the, the good thing about conflict. In a, do, uh, in a democratic society, conflict is very important because it challenges us, it refines our way of thinking, etc. Here, it, the, the constructionist model will assume that you already, uh, that the most popular uh, things out there are already known, and it focuses on the minority voices, the very emotive uh, and maybe even angry content. You get to, to see views that you did not know before that they existed, or if you are a, a person yourself with a very minority view, it might enable you to find different people with the same ideas and principles. So when we started the project, the very first thing that was very important to do is expectation management, because all these things that we discussed before are very high level and abstract, and we did not have data, not any data at all. It's the only thing that we have is plain text, news articles, maybe with uh, a publica uh, publication date, and if you're lucky, an author. And given the highly volatile nature of, of news, it changes every day. It makes no sense to apply any kind of machine learning uh, on this. If, if anybody disagrees, please come find me afterwards. And even more so, two articles that are about the same thing, but from different sources, are also completely different. So um, new.nl, short messages, very to the point, factual, geen stel, very angry, emotive indeed, and uh, uses very different terminology than other main, uh, how do you, mainstream news sources. And the Volkskrant tends to be much more elaborative, but also left-oriented. Oriented. So the first step was to look, go back to these models and try to determine each one, what can we actually measure from this? We kind of already accepted that we're never going to get a perfect representation of any of this, but let's just see how far we can get. So if you want to measure anything about how well you're doing in terms of the liberal model, you could look at personalization, how much are my uh, recommendations different from the next users. Um, then again, in the participatory model, well, the common good kind of implies that uh, everybody needs to know the same thing, so there would be less personalization going on. It would have more political articles, you had have a vocabulary that is ma matched to your intelligence level, and ideally all ideas that are out there in society should be in there. The same with the, the deliberative model, you focus more on impartial, non-emotional speech, maybe slightly lar larger representation of, of minorities, and the construction model, very emotional, very angry. Um, but you can already see a lot of problems out there, because for a person, for a human, it's already very difficult to keep track of all the opinions out there in the world. Uh, I, I wouldn't know for if you give me a random statement about something that's going on in the news today, I wouldn't be able to place it on any kind of map, axis, 
uh, etc. So how should a computer start doing this? Um, so that is why we decided to start very simple with very trivial metrics maybe even and try to build up from that because currently there is nothing out there other than evaluation by user clicks. We don't have any way of evaluating um, our recommendations so anything that's there is already an improvement. So we started with like I described, personalization calculations, which is of importance to liberal and a participatory model. We uh, visualized popularity, the writing style, um, vocabulary, the complexity of an article, which was an algorithm that was already developed by RTL News. And we want to see if there's plenty of different sources represented in your recommendations. So we visualized this in Kibana, and that could look something like this. So you see, we have the three different recommendation styles uh, that, that we chose, which are really, really rudimentary, really simple. So random just picks a, a number of random articles to display to the user and is therefore kind of a representation of the, the things that are in your data set overall. Um, most popular, which is based on the number of times the article has been shared of, on Facebook, well, just gives everybody the same articles because everybody, well, it's the same, uh, just as popular everywhere. And the more like this is a very simple, uh, is based on Elasticsearch, more like this algorithm. So we simulate a couple of users and a reading history, and then based on this query, they would recommend the articles that are most similar to this. So what you can see here, well, of course, the purple one is the, um, the most popular one, well, everybody gets the same thing, so all the users aggregated over each other end up in the same bucket. Their complexity is on average 55, which is uh, ranging between 0 and 100. Okay, more like this has more of a spread over it, probably because it is based on what people have allegedly read before. And random, well, and then the, the, the problem here is, okay, now we have, um, what does it mean? What does it mean to have a complex, an average complexity in your recommendations of 55? I don't know. But the only thing that you can do is you can compare the different recommendation types with each other. And because of that, you can kind of draw some kind of conclusion on where do I want to be? What do I want to be? Uh, what do I want my recommendations to do? So this is one approach you can take. You can aggregate it over users in total, or you can look at the things over time. Now you can see a very clear trend. This is about the, um, what was this again? The length of the article. Well, you can clearly see that the more like this algorithm tends to recommend much longer uh, articles than the most popular and, uh, and the random articles. Does it mean something? I don't know. I cannot determine that for the, for the media companies. They have to decide it for themselves. So this kind of worked okay. It covered some of the bases uh, that we identified in our uh, frameworks. But we wanted to get a little bit more than that. I discussed before that uh, deciding on a topic would probably kind of be impossible, but we tried to think of a way how can we approach a topic in a different way. So what we tried to do is take all the, the, the full text that we have, apply species Dutch named entity recognition on it, and try to see what we can determine from the entities that we find in, a, uh, in the article. We combined this, once we found a person, we would look this person up on Wikidata, and from Wikidata then you can uh, uh, request, if, it, uh, if the person is known, you can ask for their uh, occupation. And once we found politicians within the occupation, we would also try to request uh, which party they belong to and which position they currently held in well, government or whatever. And here you can also see that, for example, you're the, more like this algorithm becomes green, that it has a much larger representation of uh, politics articles than the other ones do. Which is, I mean, can't really draw conclusions from that because we have also seen in the slide before that more like this typically had longer articles, so therefore stands the reason that they also talk more about, uh, they mention more people in their articles. Also, a person, we see that, I don't think you can really read it, but here, this one reads politicians, then you have soccer player, singer, actor, writer, etc. We also don't really account for the fact that people can be multiple things uh, at once. However, again, it is about the comparison uh, here. And it's not perfect, but it is a start towards uh, maybe identifying opinions, because if you can see somebody is a politician and he belongs to this party, maybe the next step uh, could be to aggregate them and see if people get enough views from the different political parties. Something similar, but 
less intuitive. We try to do the same thing with location, and then we use OpenStreetMaps to uh, request well, more uh, detailed uh, location, uh, geo points, for example. And this is the, we place a, a coordinate on a map for each location that we found. This is for one particular uh, recommendation type. And here you could see a little bit of difference that one, uh, one of the recommenders mentioned a lot more articles about Brussels, therefore probably larger focus on EU politics. Um, by the way, this, this dot here, that's just the, the, the average coordinate for the Netherlands, so that also doesn't mean uh, much. But again, it's a start. <coughs> now we come into more uh, experimental metrics that we're looking at right now. So we're really interested in this uh, thing about emotive content, but how, do you, how can you make a computer decide if an article is emotional or factual? Well, one theory that's out there is that emotive speech contains less articles and prepositions and more pronouns. I'm not really sure yet to what extent this, this difference is really significant. That's something that we're looking into uh, right now. But if we can make this work, that would be very helpful in, the, in our metrics for the, for the different frameworks. And lastly, we have a master's student that's trying to apply language patterns to actually d d uh, extract um, opinions and the people that, uh, that hold them. She has a, a background in linguistics, so she annotated a lot of data for uh, uh, source and content of a, of a particular opinion, and our end goal is to, in the end, apply on this on new news article uh, articles and extract more from that. So, yeah, theory is always like a straight line. You kind of think, okay, this is how we're going to do it, but of course, it always turns out to be much more complicated than that, especially since this is a, a, a one year project, very multidisciplinary. Um, there's also full four-year PhD projects that try to, to solve this, and to be honest, I also don't think they're going to come up with uh, the perfect solution in the end. But we need to start somewhere. There is nothing there yet, so any insights that we can currently get into our news recommendations is already uh, a step forward. Um, many more things that we would like to do, given the time and resources. We, we want to work more on more sophisticated uh, metrics in the activating language. I'm personally very interested in trying to see if within our recommendations we can determine which um, articles about the same event, because I also think that it would be very, very beneficial. We need to test and refine this. We're currently talking to multiple uh, media companies and try to see if we can apply these principles on their actual data, which would probably be much more interested than on my largely uh, simulated uh, data. And in the end, um, from the university, there's also a lot of interest in trying to make this more user-facing so that the end user could see, okay, so my media diet, how do I end up in this spectrum? Am I getting enough uh, diverse recommendations? So all in all, initial explore, exploration, much more research needed, but I really, what I really like about this project is the multidisciplinary part of it. So the, these people, these information law people, there's a wealth of research that's already gone on in this area that's currently unused by us technical people. And the technical people have the skills to actually make this work and do something uh, with this. So my recommendation would be try to talk to them sometimes because they're actually quite funny. Sometimes, sometimes, when they don't talk about privacy. In any case, I do think this was a relatively short presentation, but it's also because I think it's very interesting for open discussion. So I'm also very interested in hearing what you think and if you have any suggestions about this. So please. <laughs>